Good morning from the Royal Senshi. I have decided to tap into my spiritual consciousness and today I have embarked on my spiritual awakening. It's now 4am and for starters I'm here to see Dr. Jan who is a spiritual guru to take me through his morning routine so I can begin my awakening. So we are moving from body to mind then to spirit. Mind is mediating between the physical side and the spiritual side. So if you want to open it now, what do you need to do? The third eye? Yes. When you are guided, the concentration can give you very fast results. Stay tuned to Soul Searching Hour. Good morning, Dr. Good morning. How so are you're, you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Very great. I'm doing good. So you're up. It's four o'clock in the morning. Yes. And as I said to you before, I want to be like you. Okay. I want to get that spiritual awakening. I want to be That's more great. spiritual as much That's as possible. Great. That's great. So it's four o'clock. What do we do first? The very first thing is to drink some water. Okay, from the fridge or room temperature? Room temperature. Why is that? When you drink chilled water, the temperature of the body drops and the body has to revive it. But if you drink room temperature, the, the body has no assignment. It has to be a full glass? Yes. Okay. Full. So what does this help to do? Yes. In the morning like this, the uh, remnant of uh, food in digestion need water to complete action. So that it goes down and uh, you have uh, softened bowels. Okay. okay. You see? So that is very important. Everything becomes like toxic mm -hmm. if it remains too long inside there without moving. And also, the blood becomes very thick when you are not uh, having sufficient water in the system. And that causes high blood, blood pressure. pressure. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. Uh, a lot of people are not aware of that. Mm. If you are not having sufficient water in the system, then your blood becomes thicker. And when oh. it is thicker, its circulation is impeded by the weight and the uh, heart has to pump harder. So every morning, are you supposed to open your bowels every morning? Yes. Every single morning? Yes. So what about if you're one of those people that have seven days, ah, five yeah, yeah, days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is very bad. Okay. It's not good. Okay. Yeah, so early morning, right after taking the water, the next thing is to open the bowels. Okay. Right from there to take a bath from there. We begin your exercises. You do your bath before your exercise? Yes. I thought it would have been the other way around because you're going to sweat or not? No. Actually, there isn't uh, so much sweating in this type of exercise. Okay. Because it's different from aerobics. It is done in a cool way mm -hmm. and mostly concentrate on the breath. So it's like a yoga yeah. meditation yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Okay. So I'm ready. I've got my mat. I see that you have your mat. Yeah. So should we go yeah. and yes, do the... Yes, we can do. Meditation. Okay. So it's good to sometimes walk barefooted. Yes, very. Okay. Why is that? What? Yes, uh, the human magnetism, the magnetism in the earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can uh, get them united. Okay. by walking on barefooted. Okay. Mm. Wow. And how long do you do the meditation and exercise for? Yeah, usually I start with a little warm-up. Mm -hmm. Then after the warm-up, uh, postures. Okay. And then from postures, uh, I get into meditation. Okay. So it is three stages, warm-up. Warm-up. 
postures. Postures. Then meditation. Then meditation. And why are we using our hands to hit different th thigh? Yes, the uh, palms carry so much vibration okay. and transfer it into the lower limbs. Wow. Yeah. Then to this side. Then to this. So every morning we're supposed to do some exercise. Yes. What is this? Yeah, it's just like dancing. Feel the harmony. Yeah. Be grateful. Uh-huh. Yeah. Grateful for the air. Mm. Grateful for new life mm -hmm. in the morning. Okay. So the next thing, mm -hmm. the exercise you're going to do yeah. is also warm up. Okay. You start from the head to the down. Okay. So the head it means your neck. Mm -hmm. So you start with your eyes. Turn the eyes clockwise, okay. then anti clockwise. Then the neck. Mm -hmm. Up and down. <clears throat> Always hold the breath okay. whilst you do it. Okay, okay. You see? Good, good. Then you breathe in again. How many times? Um, usually it's 12 times. Okay. But then uh, as a beginner, mm -hmm. you can do about six times, nine times or something okay. like that, you see. Now we descend them because mm -hmm. we came from the eyes to the neck. Mm -hmm. So we go to the arms. Just stretch out. Do this. Then you breathe in. Oh. We are descending. Okay. So we come to the waist. Mm -hmm. Breathe in. Then you reverse. Okay. Then we are descending still. Mm -hmm. The next thing we do, hold your feet together. Mm -hmm. Then we come to the knees. Mm -hmm. Reverse. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is warm up. Oh, warm up, Okoli. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now we go to the, the feet. Okay. So stretch it out a bit. Reverse. Feel it clicking. Reverse. 
Good. Then the toes. So it's like you're waking every part of uh, your body. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that is very good. Always feel grateful. So you become uh, meditative, you're, you're thankful to nature, you relax, and mostly you're doing it to yourself. So you are very relaxed. It's not like somebody is watching you. Yeah. I mean, you don't care. Okay. You just By in, yourself, inside yourself. Time. What does the breathing do? Yes, this one oxygenates the blood so much. It stores a lot of oxygen and life force. Okay. Yeah. You're doing very well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Again. We've blocked the lower flow. Mm -hmm. We've blocked the hands and the feet. Mm -hmm. So the circulation is coming to the head region. Okay. And it's not only uh, blood. We have other energies unknown to people and they are all coming to the head region. Okay. So when you turn your head down like this, because of gravity, then more flow will enter into your, your head. head. Okay. You see? And also, when you breathe in and you blow out the air strongly, mm -hmm. then uh, the lower part of the lungs, whatever still air is there, is uh, come out. brought out. Oh. So it's another form of uh, detoxification. Wow. You are detoxifying. Okay. So that's why we opened our mouth? Yes. Okay. To send it out. Okay. And when you breathe in, you are actually um, taking not only oxygen, but also life force. Yeah, life force. So it gets stored in the system. Try to touch here today. A little difficult? Yeah. yeah. But then, now uh, pull this apart a bit so that you are trying to sit. Good. Good. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. So you do that. Now pull this. Send the right to touch here. Send the left. Attempt to hold the other side. Yeah. Mm. Doc, what would you say is the difference between reality and the spiritual world? Reality and the spiritual world. In actual fact, it is the spiritual which is the, re the actual reality. Uh, this one is like a dream compared to the spiritual. So, uh, whilst you are in the dream, the dream is so real. You see, in the night when we dream, uh, not until we awaken, 
we see the dream as a, rea a reality. You see, so this one we see it as a reality, but compared to the spiritual, uh, this is a dream. It's only when we are waking from this into the spiritual, then um, we see that this is a dream. You see, but whilst we are in it, we don't know that it is a dream. Mm. Yeah. When, when we say somebody is spiritually awakened, what it means is that uh, it's just like when you are waking from dream to this one, um, he, also, uh, he or she also awakens from this one to the spiritual. So the spiritual is the real, and then this one is a dream. Okay. Like understood. Okay. Yeah. So how does one gradually, because I know it's not going to be a straightforward process, become more spiritual and in tuned yeah. with themselves. Yeah. Yes, um, most of the time we look at the person's uh, level of uh, evolution. See, everyone is evolving towards that source. So wherever you have reached, we see the next thing that is for you to do. So sometimes uh, people adjust their lifestyle that may be the beginning and then that is including how you eat how you do all things how you sleep um, whatever you do how you do it so when that one is uh, um, worked on then we move on to things like what we are we are doing now okay. the exercises help a lot of course, diet, okay. and then exercise, uh, breathing techniques. It's not mere exercises. It's not for the muscles to develop. Mm. That is not the purpose, mm. you see. But rather, the channels through which energy flow, you try to open them through these exercises. And also, you store life force. So when you do that, then you are ready for the next step. And uh, the next step, we come to concentration. Okay. Because we are moving from body to mind, then to spirit. So mind is like uh, mediating between the physical side and the spiritual side. So mind is in between. In between. And Therefore, moving from body consciousness, you come to the mental state of consciousness, and then from there to the spiritual. So the mental side, we do concentration, a lot of concentration. Mm. Um, when you are guided, the concentration um, can give you very fast results. And, uh, then from there, we come to what we call contemplation. See, the difference between concentration and contemplation. See, if you are concentrating on an object, mm -hmm. you just concentrate on it, mm -hmm. leaving all things out. Okay. When you are contemplating, then you go beyond just that point, but you analyze it. Yeah, you go around it, thinking about what it is made of, um, and so on. You see the color, the texture, mm. everything. So uh, then from there, you go beyond the mind and you enter into meditation. Sometimes people think meditation has something to do with the mind. No, you go beyond the mind. Okay. And you are only in pure awareness. In pure awareness, mind is no more there. You see, and uh, that is actually the real self. Okay. Yeah. When, you know, there's like on YouTube and stuff, there's meditation music. Is it good to kind of play that in the background or you don't need good. it? The, those things are leading you to meditation. It's not meditation itself. Okay. Even though people label it meditation music, mm. but what it is, is it's leading you to meditation mm. because uh, we have gross sound, mm -hmm. and then we have subtle sound. So when we are in our day-to-day -day life, the sounds we hear, 
these are gross. When you stop hearing them, then all the other sounds that uh, you start to hear are very subtle. So sometimes we have music leading you inwards, 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 and you forget all external things and uh, just taking you deep inside. So we call that one subtle sound. Okay. And with that subtle sound, you are very close to um, pure awareness, where you leave even the sound. Okay. It's just something helping you to, to cross, get there. To get there. Okay. See, like a boat taking you across okay. the river. Okay. Yeah. And how long do you do your meditation for? Yeah, um, that also depends on, I mean, when you enter into meditation itself, you wouldn't even know time. Yeah, okay. You are beyond time and space. So it's just a pure awareness. Okay. And uh, sometimes uh, we program ourselves so that when we go inside there for a certain number of minutes, then uh, the the mind will be knocking. Mm. <laughs> it wants to come back. To come back. You see? So it's a self-programming. Okay. You program yourself that you want to do it for 30 minutes. Okay. So when it is 30 minutes, otherwise you wouldn't know time. Wow. You'll be inside it and you can be in that state for days. Mm. You can do it for wow. hours wow. and it's like one minute. And, and when you're in it, what, what is the feeling like? What, how, how is it? Are you, you're so you're blissful. not aware of your you're, surroundings? You're, you're, you're blissful. You are just simply blissful. That means a kind of joy, inexplicable, and kind of peace, so profound. Hmm. You see, there's so much joy, and uh, that is what actually, actually uh, is described as heavenly. Wow. You see, and every soul is heading for it and uh, we are missing it and we move helter skelter there's something we have missed and we don't know how to find it but rather it is with us it mm. is inside so when we go external looking for it we never find it mm. is that state the same as um, trans is it the same as theta mm. or astra travel some people say that they leave their body go to somewhere and then come back yeah uh, when you enter into trance there are two stages in trance the early part of trance um, you are aware of things and uh, the deeper side you are not aware of external things so when you are in the early part of trance then what you are aware of um, mostly concerns your immediate space. So it's an expanded space that is including things that are not visible uh, to the physical eyes. But you'll be aware, like here, you are here, but you can be aware of other things. Uh, you can uh, be aware of things in a distance, far away, and so on. So that translates um, when you are assessing things in a distance, then it's like you have, you've traveled there. Okay. You see, so it becomes like so travel. But then uh, the deeper side, you are no more aware of anything because you are just uh, divine and it's just you. Okay. So after the meditation, um, what do you have for breakfast? Yeah, for that, uh, let me take you. Okay. <laughs>
90% of university students go unemployed every year. Not a pleasant stat, but it's happening every year. That's why we need you to lend a hand. The Skill Up for Jobs Bootcamp is an initiative of the University of Ghana Student Representative Council 2021 to 2022 with the Global Entrepreneurship Network, GEN Ghana, as lead project implementer, providing students with the requisite skills and training needed to become highly employable, work remotely, or create their own jobs to reduce graduate unemployment. Lend a hand. Let's make a change. Sponsor a student now. Please donate now at www.ugsrcskillupforjobs.com or dial star 887 star 17 hash on all local networks in Ghana. Lend a hand. Let's make a change. Imperial Homes Ghana and Great Britain has carved a niche for itself within the real estate industry as the premier provider of luxury homes in Ghana and England with a mission to provide safe, good value, modern housing and personalized estate management services to its clients and customers. All our homes meet the lifetime home standard as well as the highest standards of engineering excellence, safety, environmental sustainability and cost efficiency. Imperial Homes, a signature of luxury. So we've started off of the morning routine, which is exercise, meditation, and just being spiritually awakened and doing amazing exercise and, you know, just breathing techniques as well. Now I'm waiting for Dr. Jan to join me so that we can have breakfast so I know exactly what he intakes in every single day. Dr. Jan! Yes! <laughs> I've been waiting for you so we can have breakfast. Yeah! <laughs> That's great. You feeling good? Yes, very good. Awesome, awesome. Doc, you know, Ghana tradition. Yeah. Some people even have fufu, wache, kenke for breakfast. Yeah. Are those type of foods good to have as part of your spiritual journey? Not so good. Okay. Because <laughs> you are kick-starting digestion. Mm -hmm. So it should be um, done with a uh, food that is quite uh, manageable, not heavy, mm -hmm. not a heavy meal. Okay. Something that is quite, uh, I mean, soft. Okay. Uh, fufu is too strong for that purpose. Okay. And um, kenke is also too strong, okay. too, too heavy. Too heavy yeah. for a morning. Mo for the morning. Okay. So the day has just begun and you need focus. So that time, there shouldn't be too much uh, food. Too much food. Not oh. too heavy. Not too heavy. Doc, some people drink coffee in the morning, tea, herbal tea. Um, is it good? Uh, the herbal, good. But, okay. Um, always, we should be aware of uh, the presence of caffeine. Okay. Caffeine overactivates the system, but we always seek a balance. We don't want overactivation. Okay. okay, Doc, you're ordering for us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually we can have uh, cereal like uh, oats, okay. but you have honey. Yes, please. So, so no sugar? No sugar. Okay. <laughs> Some honey. Okay. Yeah. And that is about all. That's it for breakfast? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then let's see. Actually, it depends on the activity of the day. Okay. If one is of the uh, kind you do physical activity, mm -hmm. then you require more. Okay. Uh, if you are doing mental activity, um, you require less. Okay. You see, we can have soup okay. with uh, some... In the morning? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it depends on activity of okay. the day. Okay. You see? Uh, all we avoid is heavy meals, okay. like fufu, banku, so, no, no. you know, usually for my breakfast, yeah. I have cereal, so I can have oats or cornflakes or something, yeah. or Weetabix, um, and then I would have eggs, beans, <laughs> Are they, is that not good? Yeah, if you do a lot of physical activity, uh -huh. then that is okay. Okay, yes. right. okay. But without 
sometimes people are seated in the office, they are more into the mind mm. than the body. Okay. So that one, uh, you reduce okay. things like eggs and all that because wow. uh, you must burn it. Okay. Uh, if you're not going to burn it, don't, don't, don't take don't, it. Okay. All right. What about uh, cocoa and both roads and... Yes, that is also good. That's okay. But, uh, we should be aware of the oil we use for the both fruit. Okay. Yeah, that is all. Not the, too much oil. Not too much oil. Okay. Sometimes you squeeze it and there is oil. Yeah, that <laughs> drips out. <laughs> okay. All right. So I think we just have oats okay. for now. No fruits. Oh yeah, fruits. Fruits always good. Okay. Yes. Okay. So maybe you add some watermelon and pineapples um, okay. to to our um, okay. meal yeah. as well. The two of you. For the two of us, yes, okay. please. Thank because you. me, I have a lot of energy to burn. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. So, Doc, normally after your breakfast, what's next for you? Yeah. Um, it's good to relax a bit before picking activity after a meal. It's not so good to jump into activity right away from meal. You see, we allow few things to happen internally um, before we set off to do some activity. Okay. At least some um, 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So that means you need to have, because obviously a lot of people are on the go. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> very busy lifestyle. Yes. So that means you have to give time for your breakfast and then time for your breakfast to kind of settle. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. So if you were, for me, I usually have my breakfast and then I'm out, going straight to, to, <laughs> to business. Um, but you, what you're saying is after you have your breakfast, give it about 20 minutes yeah. before you start doing your daily activities. Yes. Okay. Yes. Actually, um, you should count those minutes as part of the meal time. Okay. Yeah, so it's part of the meal. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. And does it matter how quickly or how slow you have your breakfast? Yes, it matters. Okay. So when you approach the eating process with a, the kind of uh, relaxed uh, mood, then the cells of your body, they are more prepared mm. because um, they are sensitive to things that you give attention to. So if, let's say, you are sitting at meal and you are so much tensed up with some subject mm. you are thinking about, your body cells, they turn attention to what your mind is saying. So if your mind is not on the food, you are not aware of the taste, you are not aware of the the, 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 um, the smell, mm -hmm. you're not aware of the beauty, the color, the things around. Then your awareness is on things that are past. You're just aware of things that are yet to happen. But the immediate situation you are not aware of. It's not so good. Okay. So when you come to the meal, it is meal time, okay. not time for any other thing. Okay. Are you, so. Can you have your phone? Can you be playing with your phone while seated? Not, not, not good. Not good. Not good. Yes. Set a time. It's a ritual. Okay. The eating process is a ritual. You enter into it, all things aside, for that period. Okay. It's very important. And what goes in is not just the food, but thoughts and other things are being picked into the system. In fact, we have nine apertures, nine channels through which things are reaching our inside. Your eyes, the two, mm. your nostrils, your ears, your mouth, and all the other channels. Doc, how important is it for families to eat together? Sometimes you find that, you know, one is sitting in the living room on the couch eating, um, some are on the table. Is it good for us to be united and eat together as a family? Yes, it's good to stay together, eat together. When we do that, the auras of each person come together. And you see, auras attract and repel. 
and sometimes even in a family, the uh, certain persons repel um, uh, one another, you know. And uh, when it's like that, it's not so good. When we stay together uh, through conversations and uh, doing the same thing, like we all eating, then gradually our auras merge. Mm. And it's like those who repel, they gradually become receptive. Wow. And uh, it uh, gives a, a kind of unity. You see, so it's good. It's good. Yeah. Um, I know from speaking to you that you are a vegan. Um, so no meat, mm. no eggs, mm. no fish. Why did you decide to become a vegan? Yes. There is one important thing about eating that is so much uh, ignored. See, food um, gives us energy. But then, in order to take the energy out of the food, you put energy into it also. Mm. The digestive process, you spend energy. Now, sometimes you have the kind of food, you spend more energy digesting it and getting just a little energy out of it. So it's really a negative practice because uh, you, you digest to get more energy. And uh, if the energy that goes into the digestion is so much, then when you make the equation, then you are at a loss because the energy you got from it versus the energy you put in it, there must be uh, more released than uh, the quantity or the amount of energy you put in. And that one favors the vegan diet. Vegan diet, very easy to digest and you get so much energy out of it. Sometimes people argue that there is uh, so much nutrient and energy inside certain foods, but they forget how much energy you need to put in before you release that energy. Okay. That aspect people are not aware of. Okay. So sometimes you eat that much thinking it is having so much energy to give you and in the long run you are weak because after eating you doze off, you are tired mm. and all that. So eating should not make you weak, it should make you enlivened, mm. makes you, uh, it should make you active and that favors the fruits and the vegetables. So, vegan diet. Uh, Have you always been a vegan? Were you, you know, before you, know, you became a vegan, were you eating meat? Were you eating fish, eggs, cheese? Yes, um, I was eating practically everything until I entered secondary school. That is why I started changing my diet. What made you? What was the turning point? What happened that you decided to give all of that up because it's not easy yeah um i I've, I've tried a few times yeah um not to i mean i can forgo meat but fish i'm a very i'm very addicted to fish mm. so how were you able to break break that circle that cycle yeah at that time i wasn't following any specific uh, practice like oh i'm a vegetarian i'm this and that but something um natural was happening so I used to move into the bush, set a table in a ticket in a place, and then I will be sitting there to study. So I found certain food makes me doze off, mm. and certain food it goes with me so easy. So I adapted. I used to just um, prepare um, popo, popo yeah. and uh, I just sort of mash it in a bowl then add milk mm. and I'll be taking and the students will be laughing at me mm. uh, it digests and I don't feel tired when I'm eating uh, I'm uh, studying okay so Is you it? drink milk yes. you're okay with milk uh, yes but not now not now yeah totally days. out yeah out of uh, I don't take milk wow but those days I was taking milk okay and uh, 
uh, throughout secondary school, my diet was uh, vegetarian, but it wasn't like I was following some practice. It was just it, something naturally I yeah, felt. Yeah, you it. felt it uh, that, you yeah, know, when you eat. So, Doc, you basically went through a process of seeing that this food makes me feel tired. Yeah. This food makes me have energy. Yeah. And so you decided to cut those food out. Yes. And then became a vegan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah Doc, I, I personally, I can forgo meat, but fish seems to be a problem that I have. Um, what can I do or what can people do to try and let go of meats and fishes and all of those things so that we can live the spiritual life that you are living? When you get uh, somebody who is expert in preparing vegetarian diet, you can make it uh, so tasty that uh, you won't feel um, you are missing anything, okay. you see? In fact, the combination of spices can even give us the same flavor that we have with meat. And uh, it is a science of its own, an art that uh, one can learn. So when you are a beginner, you, you, you are worried about taste. Mm. But uh, I, I tell you that uh, taste can be also gotten. Uh, in the vegetarian preparations, okay. but uh, you need somebody who knows how to to do it. Uh, yeah. yeah, and when it is done, you will like it. Okay, <laughs> right. Doc. So, can you still be spiritual or get into that spiritual realm and still eat goat's meat, chicken, fish, and mm -hmm. all of that, or do you get to a certain point and then you can't move on to a next stage? Uh, when you're taking meat. You can be on the journey, moving, but to arrive at the destination, you need to end it. Okay. You, you need to end the meat eating. But on the way going, uh, it is permitted up to some point. Mm -hmm. Very close to the realization point, then it must be dropped. Okay. Why? Because when you become fully spiritual, the uh, radiations from there must um, permeate every part of your uh, lower side. That is uh, the mind, the body. Uh, there shouldn't be any blockages inside. Uh, the meat um, gives a lot of friction, you know, in the body. So when you are bringing down very high energy, then that is the uh, a condition that you need to drop meat eating. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Doc, just to clarify, so for you to get to that next stage of your spirituality, you cannot be a meat eater, fish yeah. eater, yeah. egg eater. You have to be vegan. Is that correct? Yes. Wow. And what about if you do eat meat? So, your journey to that certain point, right? Are you, when we eat, animals, goat meat or whatever, are we taking part of their soul, their spirit? Like what happens when you eat meat? When you develop to a certain point, there is compassion which flows out. It's part of the attributes of the spiritual side of you, your very spirit. It's uh, so loving, so kind, so, um, so compassionate. So you can't actually, uh, within your field, whatever enters your field meets love, see? So there can't be any thought of doing something to any creature, no matter what. Uh, once the creature expresses uh, um, uh, the living quality, that means the pure spirit is inside there and uh, it's covered somehow but there is a feeling that that creature has and uh, you can only give that creature love and compassion so in order to eat that creature it means uh, you have to give it pain mm -hmm. you have to it wants to also avoid it it wants to run away it's also trying to protect itself yeah. and yet you say no 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 
I have to take you. Yeah. You see, so it's not so easy when you are on that level mm. that uh, you, you eat meat. Yeah. You see, that is one aspect. And secondly, uh, your body itself has been designed uh, so that certain creatures are designed they can eat meat, but uh, yours is designed so that you should eat. Uh, uh, you are an omnivore. Omnivore means uh, practically everything you can eat. Okay. But if you become human, uh, the very first part of stage, uh, you may eat meat and your system will manage it, but then when you are evolving, you are evolving away from meat eating to the level where you don't eat meat. So evolution will do it for you, but it takes years. Mm. So you consciously, voluntarily pick the vegetarianism so that you speed up your journey. Mm. You see, that is how it is. Okay. Does the quantity matter at all? Yes. Actually, um, there is something in the system we call the heat of digestion. And some have a stronger heat of digestion and some have weaker or weak uh, heat of digestion. So if you have stronger um, heat within your system for digestion, then you digest things faster. Mm. But for some people, the same meal it takes long to digest. Remember, digestion is a slow combustion. Yeah. That means uh, it's like a chemical change taking place and uh, it needs heat. So if you have a low uh, heat of digestion, then you have to eat less. Okay. And the person who has high uh, heat of digestion, he can eat more. How do you know whether you're high or low? Is that, you know, your fast metabolism or slow metabolism? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but how does one know if you're fast or slow? Uh, sometimes it's uh, out of experience. Okay. Uh, because when you eat this amount of oats, uh, somebody will eat this and uh, he will be okay for three hours. Somebody eats this and 30 minutes okay. is burnt out. <laughs> see? So that tells you your heat of digestion is very high, your okay. metabolism is yeah. so rapid. Yeah. But somehow also activity can increase it. Okay. And less activity, it reduces the heat of digestion. The reason why children, you see nature did it that way. Children are always mm -hmm. jumping about uh, you see them very active, very mobile. The uh, nature made it so because in this way they can burn uh, the, whatever they eat. Mm. So um, they are at the mercy of grown-ups. They can choose what they want to eat. Uh, they just, they are giving. So in that process, they need to burn it out. Uh, whether it is agreeable or not agreeable to the system, they find a way to burn it. So they jump about yeah. so that yeah. it will burn. Yeah. Yeah. And what times are good to eat? Um, you know, after you have your breakfast at, what, 7.30? Is that a good time to have your breakfast or 8 o'clock? Um, yes, uh, 7 to 8, you can have breakfast. Mm -hmm. Um, it shouldn't be too heavy okay. unless you're doing very heavy activity. I mean, you're doing, um, you're, you're doing hard work, okay. then uh, you increase it a bit. Okay. You see? So and that time is good. And then lunch? What time do you have? Lunch? Yeah, lunch um, 12 to 1 in between. That is also good. Okay. But you don't have dinner, do you? No. Why is that? <laughs> I want you to see, be like you, Don. So, Doc, uh, you have to explain to me why you don't have dinner. Yes, it's, uh, it's one amazing thing. See, the body learns. There is a certain amount of awareness 
peculiar to the body. It's unique to the body. The body itself has its own awareness doing things. So whatever uh, you tell it to do, like I was explaining that mind is uh, more powerful than uh, body. the body. So what the mind tells the body, the body picks it up within time. It adjusts yeah. for it. So when um, you decide not to eat in the evening, after a while, your body accepts it. The decision is from your mind. But why did I do that? Uh, in the first place, um, I uh, wasn't doing a lot of uh, hard physical work, you see. Uh -huh. So there wasn't need to uh, put so much food in the system. Because uh, if I do that, then uh, a lot of toxic will come out. Now, when the body learns the language, when I eat in the afternoon, the body is not rushing to digest Speed it. it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Because it knows You're not gonna have anything I'm, I'm not going evening. to. Have. So by evening time, I'm still feeling good oh. without food. I don't feel hungry. And uh, I, the body is not asking for, because I've told it I'm not going to do it. So the first time it becomes difficult because the body already expects. But uh, when you don't give it, after no, some no, time. No, it's in it <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see, after a while, yeah. the body accepts. But if you want to practice it, when it comes to the time you used to eat in the evening, then you must drink some water. Okay. Why? Because uh, the body's own language, it will bring acid into the stomach to meet the food. Mm. And if the food is not there and the acid comes, then you get ulcer. Okay. A lot of people, when they do fasting and other things, they get ulcer, you see? Um, it is because of that. Because of that. The acid will come to meet the food and it comes, there is no There's food. Nothing. You see, then you get... So you have to uh, sort of uh, dilute the acid. So at that time, drink some water. And when you go on for a few days, then the body will say, oh, uh, this is a decision, then no need to put acid there anymore. It is the acid that makes you feel hungry. Okay. When it goes there to meet the food, and there is no food yet, then there is, uh, there is a message that there is something going on, you know, so you have to put food there. So that is how it is. Doc, I have actually got uh, a few friends that have turned vegan and each of them have said, look, Denta, when I became a vegan, I lost so much weight. Mm. 10 pounds, 15 pounds straight away. I knew somebody that was this big mm. and now is like your size. Mm. Does that mean the food that we eat is a heavy load on us? Yes. When um, the food it's not digested well. Mostly, uh, uh, it is like something that has to be stored. And it changes into fat to be stored. But vegetarian diet, um, it moves very quickly into the bloodstream. You know, I mean, uh, it digests quickly. But when food is inside the system for so long, things are going through, then a lot of it is changing to fat. And uh, uh, that is why when you become a vegan, uh, with the digestion, uh, digestion going on uh, fast, then uh, you don't uh, have fat. Mm -hmm. you, see, you don't uh, store. You don't store fat. You don't store. Does being a vegan make you less sick? Yes, certainly. Um, a lot of the sickness comes out of toxicity. And there is less toxicity with a vegan diet. So because of that, uh, you avoid um, things that uh, 
militate towards uh, sickness. Um, one is able to have a better function, uh, the, the, the um, metabolism goes on smoothly. Okay. And in this way, uh, you will not be sick. Okay. Doc, do you take any multivitamins, any calcium, um, because of the protein? I don't know how you get your protein or where you get your protein, some of the you know, vitamins that we need, or do you still get everything from being a vegan? There is this misconception. People will analyze, let's say, a piece of meat, and they see so many uh, things inside proteins, iron. Uh, iron, and so on and so forth. And uh, they equate it now. The vegetarian diet may be less protein, less uh, uh, mineral element or whatever. But the misconception is that it's not a question of how much uh, you find in, the, uh, in that food, but the question is uh, how easily you can assess it so that it becomes part of your system. Okay. So even if there is uh, very little in the vegetarian diet, you are able to assess it all. Mm. So much in the meat diet, but it's not going to be uh, available for you as you see there. A lot of it goes through the, uh, the system and you lose it. Okay. So uh, for that matter, uh, we can see that uh, you worry or you, 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 you just uh, disturb your digestive system and uh, you get very little out of it, mm. you see. So if the food is uh, before eating, you say, oh, this one contains more protein than this. That is not a point. When it gets inside, is that all that protein there going to be for you? Yeah. No. And you realize greater part of it it's not uh, properly uh, mm. made use of mm. because the system wasn't made for that diet. Mm. You see, so the vegetarian diet will release whatever it has for you. Okay. And do you think that being a vegan also allows you to have good memory? Yes. Um, and why is that? Mm. Yeah. Anytime you are eating something that is heavy, and of course, meat diet is uh, heavier than vegetarian diet. When you are taking something heavy, um, the body language resets and it knows this is heavy. Mm -hmm. And therefore, every cell must put attention there. They all, the the uh, circulation of blood tends to the um, uh, alimentary canal. They are all going to help so that that heavy food can be digested. And because they turn attention there, the blood in your brain is depleted. It descends to help digestion. Thank you for that. Last question, I want to touch on fasting. Okay. Um, some people fast for weight loss. Mm. Some people fast for a spiritual connection with God. Mm. Um, some people fast and pray because of a situation that they're going through. Mm. What is the correct way of fasting? Like you said, uh, the purpose is very important because we have different uh, types of fasting. And if it is for health, for example, uh, we have what we call control fasting. Mm -hmm. And that helps your health to be restored, you see? Control fasting, you begin to slow down on the heaviness of the food to lighter meals, and the interval also, you begin to increase it. For example, if uh, in the morning you've been taking uh, the bamku, the fufu, whatever, now you change it to like the oats, then in the afternoon, if you have been taking some kind of meal, you change it also to, let's say, some, some juice. 
or let's say some just soup. Okay. Then in the evening, uh, you take some juice. Then the next day, the next day in the morning, you can take some uh, juice. Then in the afternoon, you take let you take let's say uh, some fruit, and in the evening you take some water. You see, and the next day you take uh, let's say some juice in the morning, afternoon you drink water, evening you drink water. So it's a gradual gradual reduction reduction. Okay. Reduction. Okay. So um, at a point. It will all be water, water, water. Okay. Then you pick up again slowly. Mm -hmm. When you come to the last point, then you start picking up slowly back to normal. Oh. So entering into it can take you maybe four or five days. Okay. Then coming out of it will be the same number of days. Oh. You see? And that is called control fasting. Okay. And uh, it helps with every health situation. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And what's the second type of fasting? Um, if one is having a problem mm -hmm. that he wants to solve, uh, he can have what we call white fasting. Okay. White fasting, an uh, example of it is what is done by the Muslims. Mm -hmm. you see, uh, in the morning, you can have something to take and then in the evening uh, food again. So uh, 12 hours, no food. Yeah, no food. Okay. So that is called white fasting. When you want to um, develop spiritually, mm -hmm. then you do dry fasting. Okay. You see? When you do dry fasting, the first five days it will be burning the toxic mm -hmm. in your body. Mm -hmm. So as the toxic gets bent, during that period, you feel weak because it's taking all the toxic in your system to burn. After five days, you've burnt practically all. And now, some good energy will start surging from inside because that energy has been um, have been uh, sort of uh, kept at bay because of the toxicity, mm. you see. Uh, so when you have cleared the toxic, then uh, uh, you, you get energized from inside. And that energy um, is not ordinary. It is at a higher frequency. And uh, you begin to tune into the high frequency from the spiritual level. Not to cut you, but I feel like when I've done fasting, yeah. um, your senses seems to be more opened. Yeah. Like, say somebody's cooking jollof rice, or somebody down the road is cooking something, you mm. seem to smell it more. It's like, your sense is open. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, it's true. Okay. It's true. And it makes it more difficult to fast. <laughs> <laughs> because you can smell all the goodness. Yes. And but that is before, before, if it is, especially if it is the dry fasting, mm -hmm. that is before the fifth day. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But when it gets to the fifth day, then uh, even though you have this heightened uh, uh, sensitivity, mm -hmm. but the feeling of hunger will not be there. Okay. Yeah, okay. the feeling of hunger goes away. When you're doing a dry fasting to get to that spiritual um, REM, um, are you supposed to be sexually active with your partner? Um, no, but in the first five days, as I said, uh, everything is being, um, the toxic is being cleansed mm -hmm. and uh, its movement in the body can generate a feeling for sex feeling for so many things. That time you're hungry, and you, you also feel for so many things. But uh, after the fifth day, then everything goes down and clears out. Then things are balanced. Okay, yeah. okay.
That's good to know. What are the other layers of fasting and what is it for? Yeah, we have water fasting, mm -hmm. fruit fasting, um, lion fasting. Now, lion fasting, it helps one to achieve a total surrender to the great spirit. And can you do that at home? So, you know, a lot of fastings are, with, especially with our day and age, yeah. um, we do it at home. Are yeah. you supposed to go out? Some people go, also go to the mountains. Um, uh, they go to a river, lake. Where is the right place to do fastings? For fasting, like uh, control fasting, mm. uh, it's good you do at home. Okay. What's the water fasting for? Yes. It prepares you uh, to receive a lot of energy. So somebody who is always weak, uh, when he does the water fasting, then at a point, um, it's energized okay. and uh, it can be stable in energy. Okay. And yeah. how much water are you supposed to drink? How many liters for the water uh, yeah. fasting? Uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, it's guided based on the person's uh, uh, needs, okay. age and other things. Okay. We watch all that. Okay. Uh, how your kidneys can uh, really manage so much water. When you have your meal, mm. when is the right time to, to drink water? I know that growing up, my, uh, my mum's sister was always like, 30 minutes after food, then you drink water. Is that correct? Yeah, that is good. Okay. Uh, 30 minutes or even more. Wow. You see, then you drink. Why is that? Immediately you eat. The body knows you have given it food. Mm. Immediately it will bring acid to come to help the digestion. Okay. And if you drink immediately, you dilute the acid. Okay. So its f activity is delayed. You see? Right. So if you give it a chance to work on the food for a while, then you drink. Okay, okay. So I'll touch on what is the fruit fasting for? What do you do fruit fasting for? Fruit fasting really helps uh, w those who want to activate the higher uh, chakras mm. or centers. Number five and six? Yes. Okay. When, you, <laughs> <laughs> when okay. you want to activate them, fruit fasting is the best. Okay. And how, what's the period? How many days of fasting do you need to do for the fruit, fast, um, fruit fasting? If you're combining it with other practices, for example, to open third eye and mm -hmm. other things, then uh, um, it is guided to do that. The number of days is not uh, many days, but if it is only the fruit, you are taking no other practices, mm -hmm. then it takes longer before you get the effect. Okay. So if you want to open it now, what do you need to do? The third eye? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to open the third eye. Okay. Now, um, whilst you're taking the fruits, mm -hmm. Um, we have techniques that you do. In fact, uh, we have different methods and uh, always I choose the method that goes very well with a particular person, you see. Um, sometimes you do well with uh, um, outer light. If I say outer light, like you concentrate on a spot of light, mm -hmm. and we have something like, uh, we have certain oils uh, which are minty. You smear at the spot, mm -hmm. just so that you, it gives you attention at that spot. Because when you, smear, you rub there with it, mm -hmm. your attention goes there. And wherever attention goes, blood goes there also. Oh, wow. Any part of the body you focus on, blood goes there. Wow. And once we have the organ there, like uh, pineal gland, if you're concentrating there, blood goes there, and the pineal is being uh, activated in the process, then you can speed it up with breath techniques okay. so that you'll be doing breathing 
and you get more relaxed. The more relaxed you are, the more the things which are higher in frequency take over. When the mind is very active, the uh, spiritual frequency relaxes. And I, it, it means um, it doesn't come forward. But when the mind is slowed down, then the spiritual frequency takes over. Wow. It's just like a seesaw, mm -hmm. you see? When mind picks activity, then uh, spiritual frequency goes down. Okay. When mind comes down, then spiritual activity goes, goes up. up. You see? Wow. There's so much to learn and so much to, you know, get from you and you know I'm, I'm so inspired today mm. by the fact that your morning routine the exercises the meditation we've spoken about food what it does um, and how important it is um, we've, sp we've spoken about people that eat meat fish whatever um, and now we've spoken about fasting um, doc thank you so much for enlightening us mm. um, to be able to go on that spiritual journey. Mm. Um, it is not done for me. I know that I'm going to be calling you mm. and trying to get myself more into the spiritual realm mm. so that my third eye could be open. Guys, we do have to go now. Um, our breakfast is already cold because of this beautiful conversation. I hope that you've enjoyed Soul Searching Hour with Dr. Bafo Jan.